Have you ever wondered how we turn our neural networks into some of the greatest artists ever? In our cartoon, we will show you how GAN works and its incredible applications in the real world. No pain, no GAN. G-A-N, short for Generative Adversarial Network, was first introduced by Ian Goodfellow and his colleagues in June 2014. It quickly became a very popular topic, and a number of related research papers had been published ever since. But before we dive into the topic, we have to sort one important question out. How do you pronounce G-A-N? Thank you, Dr. Ian Goodfellow. We guess we will go with Gan then. Imagine we have two characters that are participating in a game. On one side, we have a counterfeiter who produces fake currency hoping to make some quick criminal profits. On the other side, we have a police officer who wants to tell the difference between the real and fake currency to stop the criminal. During every round of the game, we will try to collect some real money from the bank and the fake money made by the counterfeiter to the police officer. Uh, for each round, the scores of the police officer and the counterfeiter are calculated in the following manners. If the police correctly identify the target, that it's real money from the bank, he gets a point. If the counterfeiter succeeded in fooling the police, now the bad guy gets a score and the police lost one. However, if the police correctly marks the target as fake currency, the counterfeiter is now busted, and the scoring works the other way around. Based on these results, the counterfeiter adjusts his printing techniques, and the police officer sharpens his sensitivity to the telltale traces of fake currency. The players then start a new round with better counterfeiting and detection skills. So in the end, we should get some super realistic-looking fake money, while the police officer may still be able to tell the difference between them. Great! Now let's replace the character with some deep learning terminology. In our scenario, the counterfeiter is called generator as it is trying to generate something. The police officer is called discriminator as it is trying to discriminate something. And the real money or the actual currency in our game is the training data. The paper we provided to the counterfeiter is some random noise we sampled from, for an example, some Gaussian. Okay, let's play a variation of the game. Instead of just trying to counterfeit any denominations of bills, we want the counterfeiter to have the ability to fake different type of currency. So the game scoring now will be a little different for both of our player. For the counterfeiter, no, we require he to not only generate realistic money, but also the one that matches the requirement from the judge, say US dollar, euro, or Japanese yen. As for the police officer, now his job is to identify the fake and real money and also classify which type of bill it belonged to. In this case, we call this type of network conditional GAN. Different from the original GAN, we not only gave the generator some noise, but also input a label to control the desired output. There is a demo about conditional GAN. We can adjust three different conditions, age, smile, and gender, as the input of the network. Based on different inputs, the face GAN can generate different faces, 